understand the function of the divertor, one can think of a swimming pool. In a swimming pool, water is continuously extracted, filtered, and then re-injected into the pool. With this process, the purity of the water can be kept at a reasonable low level. In the divertor, we do exactly the same things, but not with the water, but with the plasma. It is uh, uh, in this uh, uh, component that the plasma is uh, neutralized and then it becomes uh, uh, a gas which can be pumped away. This gas which is pumped away is then, let's say, filtered and uh, a fresh uh, gas with deuterium and tritium can be re-injected into the plasma. Here you can see the a medium scale component of the vertical target. As you can see that it consists of two parts, the height flux part and the steel support structure. The height flux part is made of two materials, carbon and tungsten. The reason for the selection of these two materials mainly lies on the fact that they remain solid up to a temperature above 3000 degrees. And on top of that, they have a very high thermal conductivities. Carbon is used for the first diverter set because uh, it uh, uh, enables uh, an easier learning process uh, during the first three years of the interoperation. Whereas tungsten will be used for uh, the entire life of the machine thanks to its uh, lower erosion rate, so a higher and longer lifetime. And here you can have a, a better picture of the full scale vertical target with a height of more than one meter. There are 2,500 of these parts uh, in the ITER diverter. The development of the diverter technologies was one of the most technically challenging efforts of the whole internal components development. Three parties have contributed to this effort, Europe, Japan and Russia. And these three parties have just completed their qualification phase and they are now ready to enter into the procurement.